This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether it's websites, online stores, marketing tools, and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence for your brand or business. Hey, what's going on? GQ back with Tech Creation, where I use technology for recreation. So first and foremost, I want to say Happy New Year to you guys. 2020 has been pretty busy these past couple of weeks. I've been pretty busy tied up with merch. It's just about to drop any minute now. I just got to iron out a few more details, um, no pun intended, but that's coming soon. Stay tuned for my Instagram for more details on that. So now that that's out the way, let's get to the video. So out of all of the accessories that are available for our devices today, I've always found the stylus to be the most unique and the two most popular that come to mind when people think stylus is the Apple Pencil and the Galaxy Note 10's S Pen. Now I understand that comparing these two is not exactly an even playing field. It's like comparing apples to oranges, but I thought it'd be interesting to start a discussion on whether a stylus is better suited for a smartphone or a tablet and just sort of a run through the practicality of each of them. Now, before the S Pen or the Apple Pencil, years ago, I used to use a, a Wacom tablet and with the stylus and a little tablet for 3D modeling on a big iMac screen. So that was to me at the time, that was the best use case for an instrument like that. Fast forward to today, we have since mobilized the art station and things have changed. And while the iPad Pro and the Galaxy Note 10 are two very different devices, they both have similar experiences and both of these styluses have become very skilled over the years. So starting with the design, the S Pen that comes with the Galaxy Note 10 is currently Samsung's most advanced stylus for their smartphones. And this is clearly the smaller and lighter stylus of the two with an impressive amount of features. And on the other hand, we have the Apple Pencil that's almost double its height, its width and weight. And holding the two side by side, you can see just how different they are from one another. It's not as feature packed, but it also has its own set of features, which I'll get into in a second. Now, the similarities that these two share is that unlike the, the Wacom stylus that doesn't use any batteries, it actually powers when you actually bring the stylus to the, the surface thing. Both of these charge by securing them to their respective device. So the S Pen slides into the bottom of your Galaxy Note 10 and that's how it charges, while the Apple Pencil magnetically secures on top of the iPad and that's how that charges. Now, while I do think that the iPads is just a whole lot cooler to use, you know, just attaching it magnetically is a bit more satisfying to charge. I do kind of prefer the out of sight, tucked away method that Samsung chose with the S Pen. Now, the only problem with that, and I think a lot of you guys who own the Galaxy Note 10 or previous Note devices will relate to is because it is tucked away, it's very easy over long-term use to forget that this phone even has a stylus Therefore, you don't use it as much. Out of sight, out of mind. I mean, just looking at the phone, there really isn't any indication that there's a pen. And even then, looking at the bottom, it's flush to the body. So you kind of understand what I'm talking about. Whereas with Apple, and I think they kind of knew this because they're very good with details of the user experience, is that they make sure that the Apple Pencil is in your face, always in your peripherals, even when it's charging, as sort of a subtle reminder like, hey, pick me up and use me. And if that was a subtle tactic, then for me it worked because I spent a good amount of time with both the iPad Pro and the Galaxy Note 10, and I actually can admit that I have picked up the Apple Pencil more just because it was there and available, even though I might not have been as productive with it, I just picked it up and used it more. Now I know everyone's experience will vary, but that was just my personal experience. Now that brings me to the features and this is where for me personally, I think the S Pen is more functional as a stylus and here's why. It's because I feel that it behaves more like a tool for the Note 10 and one reason for that is because it's not just mimicking your finger, but it also lets you access additional features like the air command menu where you get features like smart select for custom shaped screenshots, the ability to add app shortcuts for a quick launch, or even the ability to translate any text that's on your screen with the S Pen and it just feels overall more interactive and it feels like an instrument that actually adds to the user experience. Not to mention its remote capabilities which is something that I've wanted for so long in the S Pen. So from a distance you can press and hold this main button to launch the camera and then with a single click take a photo and then when you factor in the gyroscope to use the all new air actions this lets you skip music tracks or switch to the different camera modes simply by gesturing your S Pen left, right, up, or down. Although the gestures could use a little more refinement, it's features like this that makes this small little pen just feel like it adds more to the experience, which it does. And to be honest, it's actually very impressive that something with such a small form factor can be so advanced. Whereas uh, with the Apple Pencil, this doesn't necessarily unlock any new features, meaning it doesn't really do anything that your finger already can't do, aside from precision drawing, where the only, I guess, smart feature is being able to double tap the pencil to switch between color palettes 
and drawing tools inside apps like Procreate. And this is where I think the distinction between these two is pretty obvious and that lies in the priority of each. So for me, I feel that the Apple Pencil excels when it comes to the art and the creation department. I just feel that it's more responsive, it's almost like instantaneous and it's noticeable whenever you apply pressure or when it comes to shading stuff and the whole thing just feels more lifelike. Now I'm sure Apple is very capable of adding more features to the Apple Pencil but at the same time knowing Apple, they probably just didn't want to overwhelm the users with all these features features like the S Pen has and kind of keep the focus of the Apple Pencil pretty narrow and that is a drawing tool. I think it's a, a safe assumption to say that whenever you hear the Apple Pencil, you kind of think about art and drawing just automatically. Even in conversations, it's sort of a synonymous. They go hand in hand. Whereas don't get me wrong, the S Pen is fantastic for drawing and it does just as much at half the size. With 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity, this gives you plenty of control to create beautiful artwork. I've seen some masterpieces done with the S Pen alone. In fact, just the other day, which is a huge coincidence, as I was working on this video, I saw this guy on the train using the S Pen and I was just mesmerized at what he was doing. So I just had to record it. He was very skilled at what he was doing. So that just goes to show you that people are out there in the real world using the S Pen. And this kind of perfectly ties into my next point. Now, yes, this guy was obviously an artist and to his benefit, he was able to pull it out and begin drawing. And while I do feel like the S Pen is more functional, clearly has more features with the remote functions, the air actions, it's a drawing tool. But because it lives in a smartphone that also lives in your pocket, for anyone who's not an artist, you can see how easy uh, its creative potential can be forgotten. This happens to a lot of people that they just forget this phone has an S Pen. Not only because of what I mentioned earlier about the S Pen being tucked away out of sight, out of mind, but also because this is a smartphone, I kind of feel that the experience of a smartphone overshadows uh, everything else. Because let's be honest, if you're using your smartphone outdoors, you're probably on social media, you're probably texting somebody, video chatting somebody, calling somebody. A lot of people aren't really thinking about art, especially on such a small canvas. Whereas with the iPad Pro, the common person is probably more likely to use the Apple Pencil because it's big, it's there, and people just wanna use it. And if you own the iPad Pro, chances are you're not carrying this huge screen on public transit. You're probably using the iPad Pro when you're at home or somewhere more relaxed. Therefore, you're probably more prone to be a little more creative during those times and pick up the Apple Pencil. And don't just take my word for it because after interviewing traditional artists for my iPad Pro video I did earlier last year, what I learned is that when using digital, no matter what kind of artist you are, most artists prefer the creation process to feel as realistic as possible. So there's no question that the Apple Pencil's precision combined with the iPad Pro's screen real estate clearly better resembles an artistic canvas as opposed to a mobile phone. And this combination not only makes the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil great for making art, but also great for getting started with Squarespace because they make building a website across all platforms simple and intuitive. With their dedicated app, building your website on the go from your iPhone, your iPad, your Android, or Mac has never been easier. With a wide variety of high quality responsive templates and a simple drag and drop workflow, Squarespace removes all of the intimidation that comes with website building. In addition, they got you covered when it comes to hosting, domains, online booking, analytics, and what I love most is just how easy it is to start with e-commerce. Setting up a store for digital downloads or physical products could not be any easier. And their marketing features like email campaigns along with support for branded email accounts makes Squarespace the all-in-one platform to make anyone go from amateur to professional. So go ahead and check out squarespace.com to get started with your free trial. And when you're ready, make sure you use my special code squarespace.com slash tech creation to get 10% off the purchase of your first website or domain. Now, just in case you were wondering, yes, I'm aware that the Galaxy Tab S6 also has its own S Pen and it's a bigger screen, it's a tablet, and it's a pretty direct alternative to the iPad Pro, but I just wanted to talk about the size difference on is a stylus better for a mobile device or a tablet? And I think we kind of uh, went through the practicality of that and figured out the answer for ourselves. So in conclusion, I think the fact that I was using a stylus long before the Apple Pencil and the S Pen were a thing, and I was using it with my iMac back in the day, it kind of answers my original thesis to this video. I think styluses just work better with a bigger canvas. I'm not an artist, but I've drawn more on the iPad than I have with the Galaxy Note 10, and I think that says a lot. But most importantly, I wanna know what you guys think. I know a lot of people are gonna agree or disagree with what I said about the Galaxy Note 10. Let me know down below in the comments section if you think a stylus is better in your pocket for a smartphone, or do you think the stylus should just stick to the tablet and tablets only? Let me know what you guys think. I'd love to know your thoughts down below in the comments section, and if you enjoyed this video, show some love to that like button, and if you didn't, let me know down below in the comments section. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, 
and turn on the alerts. So this way YouTube notifies you whenever I drop another awesome tech video. As always, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.